Hello, this is Sarah Kay, and welcome to this Krona Eye ECPD module. This module covers the VAT treatment of supplies of staff. Because VAT is not charged on the salary paid to an employee, it is often thought that no VAT is due when those costs are recharged between different businesses. But this is not necessarily the case. This module will enable you to understand when a supply of staff is made and whether VAT should be charged on recharged wages whether the recharges are made by related companies or employment businesses. There are two questions to ask when identifying whether or not a supply of staff has taken place. Who are the individuals employed by and under whose direction do they work? The question of employment is a matter of fact determined by reference to the legal contracts with the individuals. For employment law purposes, most individuals have a written contract of employment which will determine the answer to this question. Determining under whose direction an individual works is done by evaluating the practical day-to-day -day arrangements between the parties. As we shall see, although in many cases the practical arrangements point very clearly to one entity having management control, there are scenarios in which this question is more difficult to answer. So, the first question to ask is who employs the staff member? HMRC's public notices on supplies of staff state that a supply of staff is made if, for a consideration, you provide another person with the use of an individual who is contractually employed or otherwise engaged by you or is a director of your company. It is possible to make a supply of staff when an individual who is not employed by either party is involved, but we do not have time in this webinar to cover this aspect of the topic and will focus on employees. The second question to ask is who has day-to-day -day management control of the individual? If day-to-day -day control remains with the supplier, then that supplier is providing the services of his business. However, if individuals work under the control of the recipient, then a supply of staff has been made. On the slide, we have two of the more obvious examples of this. For example, if a client approaches a legal firm for advice, that advice will be provided by an individual lawyer. Even if the client requests that a specific lawyer works on their case and is particularly demanding for that lawyer to service, for VAT purposes, the firm is supplying legal services and not making a supply of the staff member. We will look at practical examples of supplies of staff from case law on the next slide. The application of the two tests is illustrated in this example from case law. If you have an interest in wider reading, the Glasgow University case provides a succinct overview of how you distinguish a supply of staff from a supply of services. The university allowed academic staff from the medical school to work as consultants at the local NHS Trust. The university benefited because the staff gained practical experience and the trust benefited because its consultants were experts in their fields. The university treated this as a supply of staff and charged the trust VAT. HMRC considered that the university was making exempt supplies of medical services. If HMRC were correct in this view, the university was overclaiming its input tax. The first tier tribunal reviewed the legal contracts and the way in which the consultants worked. It concluded that the consultants were employed by the university and that they worked under the control of the NHS Trust. As the NHS Trust controlled the day-to-day -day work of the consultants, the university was making taxable supplies of staff. To quote from the decision, the trust controls the individual's working arrangements while he is acting as their consultant, and as a matter of reality, the university has no concern with what the individual does. Payroll costs are often, for a variety of reasons, recharged between closely related or connected companies. This may be because, to save administration costs, a single company runs payroll for all the companies in the group or employees may work for more than one entity in the group. They may be shared between group companies as a matter of routine, or they may be temporarily seconded to other companies. As we saw in the last section, the question of who employs an individual is crucial to determining whether a supply of staff has been made.
and when employees are shared between group companies, they may have their contract of employment temporarily suspended while working for different companies, or work under a joint employment contract. We will look at all these issues in this section before finally taking a brief look at how the rules are applied to directors. Related companies often recharge wages costs between them, either regularly or in one lump sum at year end. This occurs for a variety of reasons, but in all cases it is important to identify whether a supply of staff has been made. This is for two reasons. First, if the receiving company is partially or wholly exempt, it may not be able to recover the VAT charged in full and this will inflate its staff costs. Secondly, the supplying company is at risk of receiving VAT assessments if it underdeclares VAT. As well as a potential interest charge, even if the receiving re company can recover the input VAT in full, HMRC can still levy penalties. A common scenario is for a group of companies to have one central company to process all payroll costs, which are then recharged around the group. In this case, Charges for running the payroll itself are standard rated. When it comes to the wages recharge, we come back to the question asked at the start of this presentation. Who is contractually the employer? If the staff are employed by the payroll company, the wages recharge is standard rated. However, if they are employed by the receiving company, the recharge is outside the scope of VAT. This is because the legal liability for paying the staff rests with their employer. The payroll company has therefore discharged a liability of the receiving company and the recharge is a form of disbursement. For an example of this in practice, the Tarmac Roadstone Holding case referred to in the notes is a good example. Tarmac processed payroll for a number of individuals who were working for a subsidiary company. It treated the recharged wages as non-vatable, but HMRC considered that a supply of staff had been made. The Court of Appeal upheld HMRC's assessment because Tarmac was clearly identified as the employer in the staff contracts. As it was the employer, it was making a supply of staff and VAT was due. As the subsidiary for whom the staff were working made exempt supplies, a significant irrecoverable VAT cost was incurred as a result of this. There are also many cases where employees are shared by more than one entity. For example, a full-time employee may spend half their time working for Company A and the other half working for Company B, but have their wages paid by Company A. Or an employee may have a shared role. For example, if Company A and B share an office, they may club together to pay a single receptionist. In all cases, the VAT treatment of any wages recharge is determined by who is the employer and who directs the staff member's work. If the supplier i.e. the entity making the recharge is the employer, we need to look at who directs the work. If the staff member works under the direction of the receiving company, a taxable supply of staff has been made. If they work under the direction of the supplying company, a supply of other services have been made, which will have their own liability depending on what they are. In answering this question, it is necessary to look at the facts of the case and it's not always easy to determine on which side of the line an arrangement will fall. If the recipient of the supply is the employer, any wages recharged by the payroll company will be a disbursement which is outside the scope of VAT. As mentioned on the previous slide, the employer is legally responsible for the wages bill, and if another party pays that, they have settled a debt rather than supplied a service. The previous two slides considered relatively common occurrences. In this slide and the next, we will look at two less common scenarios. First, the temporary suspension of an employment contract. When an employee is transferred to another group company, they may have their contract of employment transferred. But the recipient company will not take over payroll. This will continue to be processed by the transferring company. When this happens, any wages recharged by the transferring company will not be subject to VAT, provided that first, the temporary post is organised on the employee's own initiative, i.e. the staff member was not provided at the behest of the employer, and secondly, that the second employer issues the employee with a written contract or letter of employment. 
HMRC's public notice sets out the specific aspects that it expects to be covered when documenting this relationship. When an individual works for more than one company, it is also possible for them to have a joint employment contract with those companies. If an employee works under a joint employment contract, any wages recharged between the joint employers are not subject to VAT. They all have legal responsibility to discharge their debt to the individual. Although this is superficially a good way to get around the irrecoverable VAT costs which arise if wages are recharged between partially exempt companies, joint employment contracts are not common because they result in a sharing of employer liability. Joint employment contracts have been used in the outsourcing industry to avoid VAT charges on wages, particularly when an outsourced service is supplied to a VAT-sensitive customer such as a bank or insurance company. For an example of an arrangement where a joint contract of employment did not avoid VAT being added to a wages recharge, see the CGI Group case, which is referred to in the notes. Finally, in this section, we will take a brief look at shared directors. For the purposes of determining whether or not a recharge of directors' costs is vatable or not, they are treated as though they are employees, and the same rules apply. Thus, if an individual is personally appointed to a directorship, any wages cost recharged between the companies for which they act are outside the scope of VAT, as though they were working as an employee under a joint contract of employment. However, if that individual is supplied by the business for whom they work, a supply of staff has been made. This might be the case if a firm of accountants supplies an individual to serve as finance director for a client, for example. Having looked at supplies of staff between related companies, we will now take a look at how the rules apply to agencies which supply temporary or semi-permanent -per semi staff to their clients. Employment businesses are common. They provide staff to clients and usually charge a fee comprising their cost of sale, i.e. the individual salary costs including pension and PAYE, etc., and a service fee or commission which generates the business's gross profit. When considering an employment business, there are two questions to ask. First, is it providing staff or services? And second, if it is providing staff, is it acting as an agent or a principal? We will consider the first of these questions on the next slide. As covered in the introduction, the staff versus services question is determined by reference to the party which is directing the individual's work. If they are working under the direction of the supplier, then a supply of services is being made and those services will have their own VAT liability. Although most services are standard rated, there are reliefs for some. As an example, Building work can be standard, reduced or zero rated, and medical care may be exempt. If the individuals are working under the direction of the customers, then a supply of staff has been made. Who directs an individual's work is a question of fact, which is answered by reference to contracts and practical arrangements. Referring back to the Glasgow University case mentioned earlier, when university staff worked for the local NHS Trust, a supply of staff, not medical services, was made. The FTT found that the trust controlled the individual's working arrangements and as a matter of reality, the university had no concern with this. We will look at two more examples on the next slide. The staff or services question was looked at in these two contrasting cases involving medical professionals. MOHA provided qualified nurses to dental practices. The Upper Tribunal and the First Tier Tribunal both agreed that the nurses were working under the direction of dentists with whom they were placed, and that MOHA could not be said to be supplying exempt dental services. The MOHA case concerned historic supplies on which MOHA charged VAT, but at the time HMRC policy was that supplies of medical staff were exempt. When MOHA became aware of this, it made a claim to recover overpaid VAT. The tribunals held that MOHA could not claim a refund because it was now accepted that HMRC policy, which applied at the time, was incorrect. The Medesi case also involved medical staff. Medesi developed a pharmacy service for GP practices. It marketed the service as VAT-exempt pharmacist-led clinical services. HMRC assessed Medesi for VAT on the grounds that it was making taxable supplies of staff. 
the FTT analysed the arrangements very carefully and concluded that MedAC exercised considerable control over the pharmacists. Therefore, it was making an exempt medical supply. The Medesi case is an excellent illustration of the difficulties of applying the law. The FTT allowed the company's appeal, but commented that it was very close to the dividing line. If an employment business is supplying staff, the next question is whether it is acting as agent or principal. Many such businesses describe themselves as agents, but, for example, a nursing agency may, for VAT purposes, be supplying nurses as principal. To avoid confusion, we will use the neutral term employment bureau. If a bureau is supplying staff as principal, it will be making its own staff available to its customers. This is a supply of staff and VAT is due on the entire fee charged. If a bureau is supplying staff as agent, it is introducing individuals to its customers and the individual and the customer then contract for the provision of labour. When the bureau pays the individuals, it is acting as agent for the customer and the recharge of the wages is a non-vatable disbursement. The bureau only needs to account for VAT on its commission. Answering the agent or principal question is not always straightforward but HMRC have confirmed in their publications that the normal rules apply, i.e. the question is answered by reference to the contractual relationship between the parties. It is necessary to look at the bureau-client relationship and the worker's contract with the bureau and or the client. The worker's contractual position is influenced by employment law which imposes certain aspects on the relationship and the written contracts must be compared to the practical reality of the situation. The difficulties of distinguishing between an agent and a principal in practice are illustrated by the 2018 ADECO case, which we will look at on the next slide. Before moving on though, please note that it is vital that this issue is considered using the most up-to-date guidance. Previous advice provided by advisors or HMRC may no longer apply and pre-ADECO cases must be looked at in the light of this decision. As already mentioned, employment law defines the relationship between the Bureau and the individual and this has been updated and changed over the years to accommodate modern working practices. It is also the case that until 1 April 2009, HMRC operated a staff hire concession which relieved Employment Bureau of the need to charge VAT in some cases, but the concession has now ceased. Finally, some prominent FTT decisions have been criticised by the higher courts as an example, the Reed employment case in which HMRC were defeated is not accepted by HMRC and has been criticised by the upper tribunal in the ADECO case, which we look at next. The ADECO case is important because as it is a court of appeal decision, it sets binding precedent for lower courts. It is also notable because ADECO was found to be supplying staff as principal even though it did not employ the staff. ADECO is a large business which places temporary staff with a range of clients. The courts analysed the written contracts between the parties and noted that ADECO was obliged to pay workers even when not paid by the client, for example because the temp was rejected. In addition, there was no reference to ADECO being an agent in the worker's contract and the worker did not enter into a contract with the client company. The court also looked at the practical arrangements and concluded that as a matter of economic and commercial reality, temp services were supplied to ADECO and then ADECO supplied them to end clients. This is a complex decision, which illustrates the difficulties of answering the agent or principal question in practice. It is not possible to cover the case in detail here. There is a link to the case report at the end of this presentation for those who would like to read around the subject. Finally, in this section, we briefly cover the nursing agency's concession. This concession permits bureau supplying nurses, midwives and other health professionals to exempt their supply in certain circumstances. The aim of the concession is to alleviate the VAT burden on the healthcare sector, which results from the use of agency staff in places such as care homes and hospices. There are conditions which must be met before the concession applies and Bureau supplying health professionals should consult Section 6 of VAT Notice 701-57 
for the detailed rules. Finally, we will give short consideration to some planning points and on the next slide see a vivid example of the consequences of the costs of mistakes. The first way to avoid unnecessary costs is to have an awareness of the rules and to consider whether a supply of staff has been made whenever wages are recharged. The fact that VAT is not due when wages are paid to individuals does not mean that they're recharged to another company, even a related group company, is not vatable. As with all intercompany charges, if VAT is due on a wages recharge, one potential way around this is to form a VAT group, as transactions between VAT group members are disregarded for VAT purposes. When evaluating arrangements or putting them in place, remember it is not sufficient to have excellent paperwork. The practical arrangements must reflect this, as HMRC and the courts will look at the commercial and economic reality of the situations. Finally, remember, because wages are normally a significant expense, VAT errors on this subject can be significant as well. We finish with a look at the recent case of In Tandem Resources. In Tandem set up a business which enabled small employers to access employee benefits like pensions and shopping vouchers at the discounted rates which are available to large employers. The discounts were achieved by aggregating the small employer's buying power. Under the structure implemented, the employees of participating companies were transferred to In Tandem under TUPI regulations. Unfortunately for In Tandem, this meant that it was now the individual's employer. It was therefore making a supply of staff and VAT was due on the full consideration paid by the participators. The eventual assessment issued by HMRC totaled over £10 million of VAT plus interest. HMRC also assessed in tandem for a deliberate underpayment of VAT, but the FTT allowed in tandem's appeal on this point and held that penalties for carelessness were due instead. However, this still amounted to more than £2.5 million. The key things to remember from this module are first that a supply of staff is different from a supply of services. It occurs when an individual contractually employed or engaged by the supplier is provided to work under the customer's direction. Wages are often recharged between related companies and the contract of employment is key to determining whether the wages are recharged as payment for a supply of staff or as a disbursement. When an employment business provides staff to third parties, the key questions to ask are is a supply of staff or services being made? And are staff being supplied as agent or principal? Finally, the question of whether a supply of staff is being made should be asked every time wages costs are recharged. The costs of mistakes can be considerable, and VAT grouping may be desirable for related companies. I trust you have found this module on VAT and supplies of staff informative please exit this activity and click Launch Quiz to complete the quiz. Once you have completed the quiz, you will be able to print out your personal certificate. The module homepage also contains a link to the notes that accompany this module and to further resources available to you from Kroner Eye, including our in-depth commentary and reports on the cases referenced in this presentation. Goodbye, and thank you for using Kroner Eye ECPD. For further information and to view the full range of Kroner Eye ECPD modules, visit our website at kronerai.co.uk.